Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk about what I feel is the best set of effects that you could get as a plugin for Lightroom Classic. I'm talking about On One Effects. Now, many of you probably already know that On One Effects is part of On One Photo Raw 2023, and On One Effects has been part of Photo Raw from the beginning. What you may not know that you could purchase on one effects all by itself as a standalone application. And when you do, it will also work as a plugin in Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use on one effects as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. We're going to be using it on two different images. One is this wildlife image of this red tailed hawk that I took. And the other is just this simple landscape image that I took. Go to the red-tailed hawk image first. I didn't do too much in Lightroom. I just did some tone adjustments and I added some saturation. That's all I've done to this image. And I'd like to send it to On One Effects to make the bird just stand out a little more. So to do that, I'm going to just right-click right on it, go down to Edit In, then over and down to On One Effects 2023. When I do that, because this is a raw file, it's asking me to create a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Now, if you use on one effects all by itself as a standalone application, it will work on raw files directly. But kind of a thing with Lightroom is when you use different applications as Lightroom plugins, you cannot send the raw file directly into those plugins. You have to send either a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. In this case, by default, it's asking for a PSD file, so that's what we'll use. So we'll just click at it. You can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that PSD file from that raw file, and it will open it up directly into On One Effects. Now, there are a number of different effects that I could apply to this image. At one time, I actually counted them, and to tell you the truth, I think I forgot. But if you just go over here to the right-hand side and click on Add Filter, you could see all the different effects right here. And you could just hover over them, and you could see that you get a smart tooltip on the right telling you what this effect does. So, for example, if I just hover over the word Glow or the Filter Glow, it's saying Glow adds a soft focus to your photo, and so on. So you could see that. Also. On the left hand side are some presets. So if you just want to give your image a kind of, you know, preset look, there's a bunch of presets over here. And you can see they're in categories black and white, faded and matte, black and white films, black and white, modern, cinema, color grade, and so on. Next to that are filters. These just give you different looks for the image. These are presets, but they're a little bit simpler than presets. They just do a specific thing. Whereas the preset itself uh, may do or may add a lot of different filters to the image. Now, in this case, I'd like to make the bird look a bit sharper. So I'm going to go to add filter. And I think my favorite filter is dynamic contrast. So we're just going to add dynamic contrast. And as soon as I add it, you'll see that there's a striking difference. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now, it does have some adjustments and it has some presets in within dynamic contrast. These are dynamic contrast presets. By default, when you first put it on, it's going to use this natural preset. Next to that, it has surreal. You can see what that looks like, soft. You go to this drop down, and there are some more. There's a grunge contrast, just hover over them. There's natural again, that was right here. And there's soft, that's of course there. There's surreal, that's there. There's Texture Enhancer, that's a new one. But I like to start with Natural usually, and then I work the sliders. There's three sliders that specifically affect the dynamic contrast of the image. And you can see they're small, medium, and large. And I usually like to work them from the bottom up. I find that if I work them from the top down, I tend to overdo it. So I will work with this this way. And this one doesn't seem to be affecting the bird quite as much. It seems to be affecting the background more. But I do like the little bit of contrast that it's doing to the bird. And you can see there's medium and there's small. Now, I'm going to just go back to the actual preset itself. 
And then I'm just going to add a little bit of large contrast, just a little bit more. I kind of like that look, but you may have noticed it's affecting the background quite a bit. There's before and there's after. If you look at the background, there's before, there's after. Now, I shot this at 500 millimeters at f of 5.6, which was as wide as the lens would go. And it did blur out the background, you know, pretty well. But when I'm sharpening it, it just doesn't look as good. So I'd like to apply this dynamic contrast to the red-tailed hawk only, nothing else. These filters come with masks. All you need to do is click right here and you'll open up mask. Now, there's a lot of different masking tools you could use. You can see at the top uh, up here where we have the tool attributes. On the far left, we have masking brush. And again, if you just hover over each of these different masking tools or brushes, you'll get a smart tooltip telling you what it is. We go right here and this is the masking bug. That's a gradient. Next to that is the AI mask. This is the one I'm going to use. Then over next to that, we have the quick mask. And then next to that, we have a line mask. Now, future videos, if you guys are interested, I'll do more um, in, in depth, uh, uh, like um, videos on how to use these different type of masks. But today I want to use that AI, AI mask. So we're going to click on that. And then you have paint in and paint out mode. I want to paint in the effect on the bird all by itself. So I'm going to change the drop down to paint in. Then you'll see if I hover over the bird, you'll see you get that red overlay. It's, it's showing you. Like if I go on the background, see how it has most of the background right there? But if I go on the bird, it really has just the bird. That's where I want the effect to be painted in. So we're just going to click once there. And then we're going to go up here and click done. And then you'll see it's going to take a second to do the mask. And then you can see the mask is right here. We're going to view the mask. Wherever it's white, that is where the dynamic contrast is being added. And wherever it's black, that means it's not being added there. So there. Now I'll go down and I'll go like to the sliders again. You see how it's just affecting the bird now. It's not affecting the background or the sign that the bird is standing on at all. Just the bird. That's what I wanted. Now I'll do a before after. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. Now I do want to add one more filter. I want to add a vignette. I could do this in Lightroom, but while I'm here, I'll add it here. So I'll click to add filter and we'll go to the vignette filter. And you can see that there's a number of preset vignettes I could choose from. I could choose subtle, strong, big softy, edges. And then if I go to the drop down, you can see there's a lot, a lot other ones here. I get lighten edges. There's subtle, there's a white vignette, you can see. But for this one, uh, let's start with strong. But I want to center it more on the bird's eye. So I'm going to click right here, this little tool right here. Come up with this little plus sign. And then I'll click right on the bird's eye. And it just kind of centers the um, vignette at that point. But you can see how this all part down here is dark. So what I'll do is I'll go to the size and I could draw it out like this. See how it's drawing it out? So it's basically burning the corners. Just like that. So it's a little more of a subtle vignette. There's before, there's after. It's just darkening down here. I have it centered on the bird's eye. I think that's good. I think we're done with this image, so we'll click done. Now we'll, when this is done, it will return us to Lightroom Classic, and in the film strip, you'll see there's three images now, that original landscape image and the, the original RAW file of the red-tailed hawk, but now we have this PSD file that is the sharpened image. And if I hit the I key a couple times, you could see that that's the PSD file. And there is the before file right here. So there's before and there's after. So it's a subtle difference, but I, I like the effect it did. There's before. And there's after. Now let's go to this landscape image. There's some imbalance here. The sky is relatively uh, bright, but the water and the cliffs and the beach itself are kind of dark. So I want to kind of make it a little more equal tonally. And it's very easy to do with on one effects. So I'm just going to right click on it again. We'll go down to edit it. And again, we'll go down to on one effects 2023. Again, we're just going to create a copy with Lightroom adjustments and click edit. 
So again, it's going to create that PSD file and bring us into on one effects. Now, I had mentioned that there's a lot of different effects there, and there are just some tone effects that we could do, and really basic tone effects that you could do in Lightroom, but actually it's a lot easier for some images to just go to effects and do it, and you have some more control. You have more things you could do here. Uh, you can do this in Lightroom, but you have more things you could do here. Although for this image, I don't think I'm going to do too much with it. So we're going to click Add Filter, and you can see the right here, Tone Enhancer. That's the one I want. So we'll take that. Now what I want to do is just brighten it up. So what I'm going to do is go to Exposure and just brighten it up. But you see it's brightening the, brightening the entire image. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to mask it again. So we'll open up the mask. Again, we're going to use the AI mask. And this time I want to paint out the adjustment from the sky, right? And when I hover over the sky, see how it's making the sky red? That's where it's going to be applied. So I'll just click once there. Now you can see it turn blue. We'll click Done. And then you'll see that it's going to take a second to create the mask, but it did. And I'll go back down to that exposure slider, and you can see how it's mainly affecting the beach and the water, but it's not affecting the uh, entire image, like the, the sky as much. Now you could touch up the mask if you think that maybe it's affecting the clouds in the background or outside a little more. You could go to levels and you can move this around. You can see how it affects those clouds in the distance. To make it look a little more natural, you could feather it a little more, a little less, so you could make it blend in. Now the cool thing about effects you could add more than one of the same effect. Right now I have the Tone Enhancer, but it's masked, so it's mainly only affecting the cliffs and the beach and the water. But now the entire image to me is a little bit too bright. Even though everything's equalized, it's still a little bit too bright. So I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to add another Tone Enhancer, but this time I'm not going to use any mask. I want this to affect the entire image. I'm just going to darken it down a little bit just like that. And then you could see down here, there's some other controls. We could sharpen it, add some detail, add some clarity. I don't want it to look HDR though, so take that down. There's also curves in here if you want to do something with curves. Now let's add another filter, and I'm going to add that dynamic contrast again. This is my favorite filter, and I tend to use it a lot. And right out of the Right off the bat, it will use this natural, and I mentioned that before. So there's before and there's after, and I just like what it did. Just makes the clouds look a little sharper. I kind of like that. And then I think what we'll do is we'll add filter, and we'll just add another vignette. And you can see all the different ones. I should go over them very quickly. There's antique, black and white, bleach bypass, blur, borders, channel mixer. Do you want me to read all these? Why don't you pause the video, and I'll zoom this out. So you could have a quick look, and then you could see all the different filters it has. Now, I'm just going to add that vignette that I mentioned. And this time I think that I'll go to the big softy vignette, and we'll go to the size, and we'll just pull it out a little bit, see how it comes in or out. We'll just, so I'm starting with a preset, but then I adjust it to my liking. I just kind of like it like that. There's before, there's after. So we'll click Done. That's on one effects 2023, and that's how you use it as a Lightroom Classic plugin. I think in the future, I'll delve into this a little more. I'll go into some of the other filters that are available or other effects that are available. Uh, you know, this one I only used um, Tone Enhancer, Vignette, Dynamic Contrast. I haven't done much else, but I gave you a glimpse of masking. I'll show you some more masking and the different masking tools that are available. So we'll do that in future videos. And there's my finished image, and there's the original RAW file. Finished image, original RAW file. I wasn't very careful on this. I could have done a better job with the masking around the trees. But with this video, I think it gives you an idea of how to use it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.